So um, I'm briefly going to, in, in two minutes, just summarize some of the, the research work that, that I do. Um, and so one of the main um, topics is um, solving the Einstein field equations using computers to describe what happens when two black holes orbit around each other and eventually collide. So th this is the so-called two-body problem in gravity. Um, so the analog in Newtonian gravity is what happens when, say, the Earth and the Moon orbit each other or the Earth orbits around the Sun. How do you describe that mathematically? And of course, in Newtonian gravity, um, that this has been known for centuries and it's a pretty easy solution that the, the planets or the, these objects, they, they follow um, ellipses or, or elliptical orbits. The thing that makes it so challenging and fascinating in general relativity, um, and general relativity is not a theory about forces between particles, it's a theory about the geometric structure of four dimensional space and time. So the two body problem in general relativity uh, means how do we understand what the geometry of four dimensional space time does um, in situations which would describe two orbiting objects. And in particular, if you say, well, okay, well, let's try to simplify it by putting uh, a little point particle for the, one of the objects, it turns out that in relativity, you can do that and it becomes a black hole. So the simplest way to pose the two body problem in relativity is two black holes orbiting each other. And black holes have a very rich and complicated geometry. So we have to understand what happens when these so two twisting um, manifestations of warped space-time orbit each other and eventually collide. Now, when they're very far apart, um, you can apply um, various analytical methods and approximations um, to solve the problem. But when they very, get very close and eventually smash together and form a larger black hole, um, the only way in which we know how to solve the problem is using computers. Um, and so my my work over the years has been in, in, to try to do that. And um, in 2005, I came up with the first uh, numerical solution to describe what happens uh, when two black holes collide. Okay, so, so one um, message or more um, sort of comment that I would like to make, um, and just is to express um, the gratitude um, that I've always felt um, living in a society that sponsors some amount of effort where we seek knowledge simply for the sake of knowledge. Um, I know there, there, there are many other things that are much more important and the preponderance of humanity's effort should be spent on them as is, as is made sort of historically apparent in the pandemic in which we're living now. Um, and you know, often in scientific endeavors, um, arguments are made about potential um, technological applications that will happen at some point, even for something which is purely theoretical, like the work that I do. On the other hand, um, you know, I find you know, the experience of life so much richer um, you know, by, by enjoying the, the knowledge that, that humanity has collected over the, you know, the centuries. And I very much appreciate that in this society there is still some um, amount of support that is given for such kind of endeavors and I feel very grateful for that and I would encourage people who are interested in science to sort of embrace that uh, inner curiosity and accept that um, as a valid reason for pursuing it, um, pursue knowledge for the sake of knowledge um, and be, be grateful and understand that you know, in this society that isn't something that always uh, can be taken for granted and to try to give back in some sense then for the kind of the privilege of being able to spend some some time, um, or in my case, feel very fortunate that this has been my career, um, to be able to spend a career seeking knowledge.